Is there such a thing as a plasticless espresso machine? That's what we're going to talk about today in this video. It's a question I get asked all the time through emails and through comments. And uh, that's what we want to take a look at today. So the short answer is no, by the way, there is no machine that's completely plasticless. You still need some O-rings, some gaskets in any of these machines, but we're going to look and see if we can find one that's at least pretty close to plasticless. All right, let's start with the Dedica. It is one of the best selling espresso machines in the world. It hits a great price point, but yes, it does use a lot of plastic. You got to start here with a water reservoir that is made out of a hard plastic. I'm sure that it is food safe, most likely BPA free. So anyway, the water then goes from the water reservoir to the pump with a silicone line that kind of looks like this one here. Now from the pump, it gets pressurized and it ends up going here to the safety valve. From the safety valve, it runs with a high pressure line to the uh, thermal block. And from there, it runs from the thermal block with a high pressure line down into the brew group, which is plastic. And as you see, all these lines, whether it's this silicone line here, or whether it's the silicone lines leading from the water reservoir to the pump, or these high pressure lines, they're all some kind of silicone or nylon or some kind of plastic. And then you're going into the brew group. I don't know how well you can see it, but the brew group is also in plastic. And that is where it exits here. Now you also have a valve here. So this valve has the purpose of bypassing the brew group. If you flip it like this, you're going to bypass the brew group so that either warm water goes and flows here uh, through the steam wand or steam in the case that you're in steam mode. The wand is fed here from, from this switch with like a silicone hose here. It enters or it exits through this metal wand. And again, here you've got a rubber nozzle. So there's a lot of plastic being used on this machine, including in the hot water parts. That's it is what it is. You could say, finally, you got this here. The porta filters got plastic in it too on the bottom to distribute when you are using pressurized baskets and therefore you need to kind of route that stream of liquid to exit the two holes. So you've got plastic in there also, but you can of course just switch this out with a proper porta filter like this one. This is all metal. You can put also a non-pressurized basket in there. I use IMS and at least then your coffee is exiting out of metal, which is nice. But most thermal block machines are like this. They've got some kind of plastic line leading up to the pump, some kind of plastic line leading to the heater, and then some kind of plastic line leading from the heater uh, into the brew group. So a lot of plastic, whether that's the DeLonghi's or the Sage Brevels or any of the off brands, they all use that kind of same principle. Let's take a look at the Gaja next because this is a boiler machine. All right, so if we have a look at the Gaja, it's quite the same. It's got this uh, water reservoir in here, which is a hard plastic. I'm sure that it's food safe. And I trust big companies like DeLonghi or like Gaggia to use food safe materials. But anyway, again, people ask about this a lot. So let's just have a look. From the water reservoir, the water gets fed up into the pump. I hope that you can see that. Into the pump, it exits the pump through a plastic overpressure valve. From the overpressure valve, some of that water goes right back down into the water tank and some of that water, the pressurized water that's below the spring pressure here is going to go into the boiler. Now the advantage with this kind of machine is that the boiler sits right on top of the brew group. So that's nice. You don't need a line going from the boiler to the brew group because you're sitting there. And as you can see, there's also a line, a metal line going here off of the boiler to the steam wand and the steam wand, by the way, is also metal. So this machine has an advantage. The advantage with this machine is as soon as the water is heated, it is no longer flowing through any plastic, but rather through metal. This one uses less metal and I would give the advantage to the Gaja for that fact, if that's what you're looking for. This Gaja is one example. Another one is the Rancilio Silvia. It uses a similar principle. Mm, but a different kind of boiler. This boiler actually is aluminum inside and some people want to avoid aluminum. Uh, the boiler inside the Ranchilio is a different material. I can't remember what, but that also uses more metal as 
do machines like the Rocket Apartamento. I used to have a Rocket Giotto. I had to take that thing apart because it was leaking and it uses a lot of metal in there too. I think it was a copper boiler and everything that was heated from, from the boiler forwards was then fed through metal pipes. So if you're getting like kind of like a more expensive Italian built or German built espresso machine, at least from the boiler onwards, they tend to use metal. So that's a good thing. However, of course, everything still uses some kind of plastic water reservoir. Oh, and by the way, this is the water tank that you get in a lot of those Italian made machines. This one came out of LA Lit and I used to have a Rancilio Silvia with a similar kind of tank to this one. It's just like a milky kind of injected molded plastic. To be honest, I kind of prefer these clear hard plastic types myself. The only exception that I know to this is the ECM Puristica. That is a beautiful machine that comes with a glass water reservoir and the lines coming off that glass water reservoir. Are also some kind of braided metal. I think it's braided stainless. So that machine may very well be all metal. Getting value from this video? Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Let's move on, however. Let's take a look at something else. When people ask me for an espresso machine without any plastic in it, I first think of the La Pavoni. There is very little plastic involved. It's really just the cap is plastic, although the threads, of course, are metal. These threads here are metal, but it's like some kind of injected molded plastic. But yeah, anyway, the water's not touching this, steam is touching this. And otherwise, you really don't have much plastic. The drip tray, but okay, you're not drinking out of that. And otherwise, what you do have, however, is in the plunger, there's some kind of, oh, there's gaskets in there, right? You've got O-rings here, really kind of all over. You've got O-rings to seal the pieces together. And of course you're applying pressure here. So you can't just have metal running on metal. Um, you need some kind of gasket. So this uses O-rings, it uses gaskets, and therefore it can't say it's completely free of like non-metal materials in there, but they don't come into much contact with the water. So I think this is a good one to recommend and you can steam milk and make espresso with this, which is an advantage over the next ones I'm gonna show you, which cannot steam milk. Although with this one, I have not had a lot of luck in steaming milk well. This is also expensive, by the way. And um, most of the options that use a lot of metal, they, they're simply expensive. So that's just kind of a pill you have to swallow if you're looking for a machine with very little plastic in it. The next one to look at and consider is the Nine Barista. The Nine Barista is a really cool looking machine. It does use some plastic, but not a whole lot. It's got basically three parts. You've got your water boiler on the bottom. The water boiler is made out of nickel plated brass. And there's no, as far as I can tell, no plastic in there whatsoever. Then you've got this upper chamber here, and this is interesting. It does have two, as you can see, red gaskets. So those rubber O-rings, I mean, I wouldn't call rubber plastic. Rubber traditionally was actually like a, a natural product. But anyway, it does also have plastic here on the top in kind of like a dispersion screen. Otherwise, not, not much uh, plastic to talk about besides this here. This feels like silicon, and you have to use this because you fill the portafilter with your coffee grounds, then you put this on top so that they don't fall out, and this also acts as like a shower screen. So with this one, you don't have much. You got two gaskets, you've got the dispersion screen, and you've got this kind of shower cap. So four parts essentially. That's not bad considering that this makes an actual espresso. And it's a really, it's a really cool machine besides. Now the last thing to look at is this. This is the Bialetti Mocha Express Mocha Pot. Um, something pretty incredible. There is only one part that's not metal and that is this gasket. So okay, we are working with water here, with heat, with pressure, and with that combination you always need some kind of gaskets because you have to seal the parts together. So yeah, here you got a gasket that does need to be replaced 
from time to time. But I would say of all the machines, this has got the least amount of non-metal material inside. With the caveat, this is all made out of aluminum. Now, some people want to avoid plastic. Some people want to avoid aluminum. And I'm sure that there's some people who want to avoid both. So if that's the case, then the Bialetti might not be for you. But okay, that's how it is. You can also buy Bialettis, however, or mocha pots that are made out of stainless. They do exist. But the advantage, of course, with this guy, first of all, it's light. You can take a camping and it doesn't hardly take up really uh, much weight. And it's cheap. I think this guy only cost me 30 bucks. So that's what we got going on for this video. I'm curious what you guys think. Do you try to avoid plastic? Do you try to avoid aluminum? What do you look for in your espresso machines or in your coffee machines? And is, is this relevant for you at all or not? I hope this video helped you a little bit, get a little bit of insight into the machines. And if so, give it a like. If you thought it sucked, give it a thumbs down. Whatever the case, until next time, I say arrivederci. Fiat and bye now.